Hey, what's up, guys? This is the Fed Show, and today we have Octavio as our guest, aka Toggle the Trio, and uh, we're just gonna get into it, man. So I just did a rebrand, and with the Fed Show now, rest in peace to the Six Pack Podcast. Rest in peace. And uh, maybe I'll do a like. Well, after I can drink again, maybe we'll do like a. We'll do something. <laughs> But uh, Tavo is actually going through a rebrand right now. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. So yeah, man. Uh, uh, formerly known as Tavo the Trill, I felt like I accomplished a ton with Tavo the Trill, but I felt like it's a uh, the word the word chill in itself has kind of got uh, maybe outdated, overused. Yeah. Uh, people don't respect it the way that yeah. it used they used to. And plus, I wanna, I wanna expand. So, um, a dream of mine, and I think a dream of my my mom's especially, is uh, making Mexican music. So I wanna cross over into uh, música regional. You know, uh, it's kind of like the the northern sound of 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 Mexican music. And uh, I think Tavo the Trio kind of would have been yeah. tough to translate through that. So, yeah, going by my my first name, Octavio. Um, I'm uh, you know, no no facade no more, no rap hey, name. Man, it no. was it was it was odd because when uh, when I posted, I, I did a post and I was looking for the song, right, the new song Two Seater, and I was like, where the hell is it at? And it, even in Apple Music, you yeah, know, Octavio, and I was like, oh shit! But I, I, in my head, I was like, it's weird that that name doesn't have like, there's not like a single like a main artist that just goes by Octavio, right? At all. And right. I was like. I mean, for a rebrand, it works perfect because you're right. not having to fight with all oh, Octavio so and so. No, no, just that's it. Yeah, that's it, man. Just straight up. I'm um, actually been struggling a little bit with that just for the fact that I'm of a, a verified artist on Spotify and Apple Music, and uh, there's actually some other ar- artist music linked to my artist page. Mm-hmm. So I'm working through that. Hopefully, here pretty soon it'll clear up and yeah. you'll be able to just see me. So yeah, yeah. So, so how does that how does that music look? Have you dabbled into that? Have you recorded anything? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, um, I've been working on a. I probably have like sixteen to twenty tracks on deck. Okay. Um, and I kind of want to just more so uh, embrace the the culture that I was just blessed and fortunate enough to be born into. Yeah. It's a whole another demographic that I don't want to say that I've been taking for granted, but I haven't been focused on. Yeah. And so. You know, I've uh, the times that I have done something in Spanish, you know, something with more Mexican on the Mexican end. Yeah. It's always gotten a lot more attention. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I just want to cater to that and embrace it yeah. more so than before. I wa- didn't want to be put in a box. I didn't want to be yeah. the Mexican rapper. I just right. wanted to be respected as an artist. You know. Yeah. So um, now that I feel like I've accomplished so much. And learned so much through the years that you know now is the time for me to really come at it a hundred percent. And what's more exciting than a new artist, you know? Right. Yeah. And I mean, you already got the experience too on the back right. end with like, yeah. There's there's a lot there. All right, dude. I want to ask you something. So like, when you first like your first show you ever did, did you get like, did you get nervous? Did you get like not I mean stage fright? Did you have any like those butterflies? Honestly, definitely. Uh, you know you. I feel like if you're not nervous or maybe anxious a little bit, you may not care that much. Yeah. You know, but I'm always been a, I've always been a performer. I've always been, I was an athlete. Um, you know, and and I always perform under the most pressures when I do my best. You know, so yeah. uh, I love it. Uh, I know you you took Dank out with the foot race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was talking a lot of shit. <laughs> That's right, man. And I was like, I was like, you got beat, bro. After all that. Three yeah. times, three times, <laughs> just to make sure. But yeah, man, that's a that was one of those things. Those those reels that I cut with Dank talking all that shit. <laughs> it was awesome. I, and then he was, he's like, "Ah, Ty will beat me, bro." I was like, "What?" And so yeah, I mean, so yeah, just back to the to the stage thing. It's like for me, it's like a like a race. Like when I'm when I was racing. It was like, you know, I'm focused on what I'm doing. Nothing else in the world matters. It's like, feels like true freedom. You know, like, yeah. I'm not worried about the problems I have in my life. I'm not worried about, you know, anything. I'm just focused on the task at hand, you know, performing, doing a good job. And 
I mean, it's fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's I think I think if you're making music and you're not having fun, it's I mean. Why are you making it? Yeah, it's counterproductive. Like yeah. music's supposed to be fun. Even sad music, you know, it's supposed to yeah. let you express yourself. So. Yeah. Definitely. All right, man. Let's roll in. Oh, well, we'll plug we'll we'll plug the shows at the end, but uh, let's roll into uh, our topic. And honestly. You pronounce it because I'm gonna fuck it up because I don't speak Spanish at all, and then we'll <laughs> talk about what it means. Yeah, we we were talking a little bit uh, about uh, machismo uh, and being machista, which uh, you know, and, and especially in the Latino culture and the Mexican culture for sure, it's uh, it's kind of like uh, I'm the man, I'm the breadwinner, what I say goes type yeah. thing, you know, and uh, and the landscape that we're in nowadays. You know, I, it's obviously pretty frowned upon. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, for obvious reasons, right? Yeah. I mean, ob- obvious reasons, for one, just because, like, we're big on equality now. And I never thought, like, I still have, like, some controversial views sometimes. I because, do, too. Because it's not the fact that I think you're any less than me. But a lot of women require or they want their man to be equal to them and pay. Sure. Or make more than them. Right. But then it's not always equal across the board. Like, okay, you make more than me, so you're more valuable. But at the same time, at, at when when bat, when shit goes down, there's certain shit that man men are expected to do. Yeah. If someone breaks in the house, I'm gonna go look. Yeah. That's just me, but yeah, I don't know, man. Steve Harvey's talked about it. Like, why would you not want a man to do this, this, and this, and he gets paid the same? But then he reverts back to the male role as, hey, you need to provide for your family raise your children and we should but at the same time <clears throat> i just guess the ideology gets lost and then now you, you can't afford to be a single man like you have to be uh, you have to be a, a married couple and both of y'all work with kids just the landscape of the way that the economy is and yeah trying to do anything in life so i don't know what it's it's not 50 50 but it's not that i'm looking down on you yeah but at the same time, there's things that I expect myself to do. Like, like, uh, so I made a I made a post on Instagram on a story talking about the husband goes outside and he says, "What's for dinner?" And the wife's cut in the yard, <laughs> and it's like, bro, shut the fuck up. Like, go make something, go pick something up, and like, if she's doing that, if she takes on a role that a normal male role, like cutting the grass, yeah, or something like that, or Maybe she's washing a car or she's working on a car in the garage. Bro, step your shit up. Like, yeah. there's no, some shit you got to be doing. There is, man. And that's and that's kind of uh, that's kind of where uh, I feel I have the controversial um, views as well. Just because, I mean, for one, there's just certain things that men are better at. And there's certain things that women are better at. And when you talk about anatomy, like, yeah. bro, I'm, I have more muscle, I have more, you know, those, those type of things matter, you know, like yeah. you said, if someone breaks in your house, what, your, your, your woman's gonna get up with the baseball bat and go yeah. check, cause you're scared, like, yeah, yeah, uh, I think especially too, like, uh, in my family, uh, my dad was a breadwinner, my dad, I was fortunate and blessed enough that my mom was a stay-at-home mom, yeah, and it made a huge difference in the way I was raised, for sure. It definitely kept me out of more trouble than yeah. if my mom wasn't at home, you know. But uh, uh, I'm from I'm from the country, bro. Like it's straight up, like you know, we work cattle. We were I worked on the oil rigs back in the day. We come home, my mom cooks, cleans, and does all those things. But it never threw off my perspective as to like uh, where we're at nowadays and like yeah. what a man needs from a woman nowadays. So, you know, I. I I'm the biggest mama's boy. Oh, so she, my, talking to one right here. Facts, bro. Like my mom comes down and she'll stay with me uh for a couple couple months at a time and like I wake up, I get in the shower, by the time I'm out of the shower my bed's made, breakfast is made and like it's just it's my mom's a saint, bro. She's amazing. Yeah. But I don't expect those things from a woman right. you know, in, in in a relationship. If that's something that she does and man, that's you're one lucky guy yeah, nowadays, you for know. Sure. But you know, I, I think uh, at the end of the day, um, when we talk about machismo and those things, I, I, I'm pretty lucky that I had a great example in my life. My father in my life is just, a, you know, he's like my hero. My brother, same thing. Those guys are people that, uh, you know, they just give all for their family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm 31 years old. I'm single. I don't have any kids. Um, 
and I see a lot of my friends go through the relationships and the kids and you know I just I feel like uh, my biggest fear is like having kids with the wrong person and it's not necessarily like uh, you know because I got friends that ain't with their baby mamas anymore but they're yeah. great but they're they're great uh, co-parents you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah for sure and so for me it's like I think besides you know the machismo and I'm just not I'm not ready to settle <laughs> like yeah. every time I've been in a relationship like I never spoke on this before but like I was with the girl for four years and you know you're just so focused on that person when, when we broke up after four years uh, it's like my life just took off like I was more focused on myself, on my career. Yeah. I got a promotion. I, you know, I started getting really big interviews, like on Telemundo. Started doing huge shows. Um, so you know, I, I think as as long as uh, you find that person, and, and everyone's different, right? Yeah. Some guy might like to get, you know, he likes somebody that's a little bit more assertive, telling him what to do, where to yeah. go, how to do things. Maybe and he needs that motivation, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's different for everyone, but. But yeah, you know, me and Eric have had that conversation because he was talking about marriage. Yeah, I mean, I I was married for 14 years, so <clears throat> I, I feel like the biggest takeaway I have from that was you got to be real. Yeah, the real person, the real you, and she's got to know the real you. Like I know, like most religions, most people, oh, you need to get married and then y'all move in together. I say fuck that. That's you crazy. need to live with somebody. Yeah, because. Think about that. So you dating a person, they have their apartment or their house, and you have yours. Y'all see each other 10 hours a day maybe. Maybe y'all sleep over on the weekends and stuff. But that's not that person on Monday morning when they're rushing out the door to get to work when they woke up late. That's not that person when they had a shitty day at work and they come yeah. home to you. Like, you got to you gotta know somebody before, before you're ready to say, oh, yeah. I know this is a terrible analogy, right, but it's kind of like, man, you ain't just going to buy a car without test driving it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. And then, like, someone will take that out of context. Oh, well, he means sex. No, no, no not at no. all. No, that's, a, I mean, it's it's 100% true. Like, you want you want to get on the highway, give that car some gas, does it need an alignment, the wheel shaking, <laughs> transmission shifting. <laughs> like, that's, 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 those are all the things, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, what kind of food do they eat when they're at the house? Right. Like, do we get along? What do they believe on religion and marriage and children like those are all questions you had that that come up and some people don't talk about shit like that they're just all caught up in each other and then before you know it you're like wait who the fuck is this person they're not really compatible you know they really aren't and i think that's what happened to me even bro because being this girl together four years and uh you know uh she broke up with me over a text message and that's crazy for one <laughs> like that's some shit you can't come back from, you know. So yeah. I, I told her, you know, but this was in the COVID space where, you know, there's a lot of a push on on vaccination and stuff like that. And I won't get into that too much, but uh, we saw how we had different views on it. Right. Yeah. And so she just was so passionate and so caught up in it that, you know, she made an emotional decision. And like that's something that four years down the line, I didn't know was going to be an issue, you know. Yeah. So like you, like when do you really know someone? You know. Yeah, and I mean honestly, that's that's crazy because, dude, I didn't get vaccinated. Yeah, I didn't. Either. I didn't. Uh, it, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Like, dude, we we can't cure cancer. We can't cure AIDS. <laughs> well, now we got the pill for HIV or whatever. Right. Now suddenly, after all these years, <laughs> but we've been working on cancer for a long time, HIV for a long time, and you're telling me we can't cure the common flu. Right. But this was going to be the vaccination that that's helped save lives. And yeah, did did it help some people that were in a certain age group? Y yeah, I'll say it did. I'm not going to say it didn't because I can't prove that it didn't. Sure. But I'll. But that's that's like that's like political views. Yeah. Like exactly. no matter what your political views are, we you can be attractive. I can be attractive. We can be all into each other. But we get into a debate over beliefs. Beliefs. Like I mean, it could be something as small as. I don't. I don't even. Want to <laughs> it's like ah, we'll just say abortion. Like sure. some some people, like am I pro-abortion? I'm not pro-abortion. I don't think we should kill babies in that sense. But at the same time, I think that there's contraceptives, there's condoms, yeah. there's birth control. There's some steps to take just in case 
you're not ready to have a kid and you're having unprotected sex. But at the same time, I'm not going to say, man, that girl got raped and got him. She got pregnant from yeah. a rapist. Okay, I, I, I see it. I get it. Yeah. Or, okay, she got pregnant accidentally. She's been married for years, but her life is at risk. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to argue and say that I'm 100% like every baby should always yeah, live. Yeah, it, sh- it, it shouldn't be a just a one way or nothing, you know. There's and circumstances. At, yeah, and at the end of the day, that's like her body, her choice. Like if, if that's your choice and you're making, I think you should be, make better choices. But I'm not going to tell you what to do because yeah. that, that's not you're not me and I'm not you. So that's, do, do your thing. That's exactly where I was going with the whole, uh, the whole thing. I was just talking about the breakup because uh, I was very supportive and all the the things that she deemed fit, you know, to to protect herself and uh, uh, I, you know, I definitely was supportive and. And she was definitely like a pro-choice type of type of person. So, you know, then when I started getting pressured about it, I'm like, keep the same energy. Like, yeah. this is my body. This is my choice. Like, I get to choose what I put in my body. Yeah. And then, but you know, then it, it started. It got into like, okay, so what happens if we have kids? You know, are you gonna are you gonna tell me not to vaccinate my kids? And you know that all that stuff's heavy, bro. <laughs> You know, and, yeah. and there's things that she don't even think about. And four years in, I probably should have been thinking. She probably had more than one reason to break up with me, right? Yeah. Uh, four years down the line, no no real plan going forward. So, you know, I, I don't blame her and definitely no hard feelings. But, oh, you know, yeah. what, what it comes down to, you know, when do you really know a person? And if you don't live with someone, it's hard to say that you know that person. Yeah, you know? because, I mean, you, like uh, normal dating, let's say, like, you're going to court a girl. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to say when it's okay to sleep with somebody, <laughs> but that's one night. Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all go get coffee, y'all get dinner two or three times a week. That's normal courtship stuff. Yeah. Like you're dating a girl, spending time with her. Okay, let's say three months in, y'all are like, okay, I want to be exclusive. Just an example. Not, <laughs> not a rule that I follow. <laughs> but, I mean, just so 90 days in, you're, you're, y'all spend enough time together, y'all feel like y'all want to be a couple. Okay, cool. But then... Okay, so maybe you like, hey, maybe let's let's go on a trip. Let's go to like Oklahoma. Let's go Broken Bow for the weekend. Right. Then you kind of see like, all right, this is someone else's space. How does she? How does she react? And I mean, this goes for he or she. Like, if you're a chick, how does he act in a different space that's not his? Um, and then you just kind of learn things by people. Like, do they wake up like bright and early? Are they like morning people? Because I'm a morning person. Yeah. I, Dude, once I'm out of bed, like, let's go. Like, I'm going to yeah. put clothes on and I'm going to go do something. Right. Uh, I don't want to sit around the house and lay around the house and just be like, let's be lazy and watch TV. No, my shoes are on and I'm like, all right, what time am I leaving? All right, I'm going to drink two cups of coffee and watch this show <laughs> and then I'm going to burn out. Right. And but, but sometimes other people, they're like, let's just be lazy around the house. And there's nothing wrong with those days. Yeah. You can have your lazy day. Like, we plan to stay home and watch the football game at noon. So we woke up at 11. We had a late night. We're just going to kick back, maybe get some pizza or something delivered. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, dude. Like, <clears throat> my ex, my, my kid's mom, she's not a morning person. Yeah. Never was. And never thought about it. But we were just, we got a kid and then, like, rushed into a marriage. And <laughs> it just got out of hand. Yeah. And, like, we made it work over time. And But everybody can't do that. Yeah. And here's the other thing, too, is that also now people don't have any type of commitment either. You know, I think uh, I think when it comes to the internet and everybody being accessible, it's definitely changed yeah. the scope of of you know. I, I when I think about a, a relationship, a uh, marriage, it's a commitment, right? Yeah. And nowadays it's like uh, you know, shit gets hard. You, she already got you know hella dudes in her DMs every day, anyways. Like, why is why is she gonna put up with something when she can go get? you know, a new shiny toy or whatever it may be, you know, so. Hey, and it's, like, I I ain't gonna lie. I'm not one of those dudes in anybody's DMs. Yeah, me neither. Like, I don't, like, I might conversate with you. I might say something back to one of your stories or something, (laughs) or I might, like, comment on a post. And maybe we start talking like that, chit-chat conversation. But I'm never like that dude that's like, (laughs) hey, 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 hey. hey." What's up? Where you at tonight? (laughs) Let me link up with you. Let's go get coffee in the morning. Oh, you're busy? Let's go get lunch in the afternoon. Like, Like, I'm not that dude. I do not give that much of a fuck. (laughs) Yeah, fact same. If if I can look at your page and I'm like, oh, she she likes she goes out a lot. That's cool. Or she looks like she likes to do this. That's cool. And then maybe, like, we'll chit-chat here and there. 
and then hey maybe we should hang out sometime but not like i don't if she says no or she don't answer if she wants to I'm hang like, out she's gonna hang out with you yeah you know if she wants to talk she's gonna talk to you yeah you know and there's nothing wrong with maybe trying and and you know maybe timing something like yeah. that you know but don't be one of them guys <laughs> that's in there like the same message 15 times and she hasn't replied or yeah, she's bro, basically she, curving you every time she's not you into still, it, bro. Yeah, she ain't into you my boy you, you learned <laughs> I think I hit one girl one time and she didn't respond I was like okay cool and then I guess it was timing because she messaged me later it's like hey what's up you want to get that drink yeah and I was like what is how what what how did this happen <laughs> yeah and I back and look I'm like that was like a month ago right yeah okay let's go but yeah. I mean, timing is everything. You just don't know. Someone can be in a relationship. Some people don't put their relationships out there. I don't, bro. Some people, some people just stay quiet. That you see videos of them out, or you see videos of them doing something. You'll never know they have a significant other. <laughs> That's really me too, bro. And and it's not even a thing about. I'm just a private person. Like I, uh, I tell you right now, if I have a girl, like you're gonna see her with me anywhere. I'm not gonna go anywhere that I can't take her. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's just out of respect, right? But like. You know, I think as an artist, uh, being ha- having an image of, of maybe being available, yeah. you know, it kind of plays a role in, in being an artist. But, um, yeah, man, I'm a private person. I don't put my stuff out there. Uh, but you can you can know for damn sure that if I'm with someone, she knows it and she, she, yeah. and she feels it, you know. So. Yeah. I think that's a lot of people get caught up in in that well they don't put them on there so yeah. they're not in the real thing it's like no nah, like some people like one of my cousins she uh she's been with the dude for a couple of years now i feel like yeah. maybe it hadn't been that long but it feels like he's he's been around the family yeah and they had a conversation like early on which i think a lot of people should have like hey let's uh let's just see where this goes let's not start posting each other and all tagging each other and everything a lot of times it ends up you end up looking silly because of that yeah. you know and I ain't gonna lie, I had to go back and delete some posts on Instagram from the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man. And then, like, you go back and you can look at some people's comments and some things I said. And I'm right. Like, Fuck. <laughs> but, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I mean, okay, the, the, loop, the loophole on that is if you block that person, then all your comments come off of their shit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so. Now you know. <laughs> like, yeah. there's no interaction. Like, it's like y'all never knew each other. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I uh I I blocked somebody probably for the first time ever uh recently and uh <laughs> I won't talk, touch on it a whole lot but that's pretty crazy like you know all it really takes is hitting a button to get somebody out of your life nowadays. Yep. You know that's f- fucking crazy. I did that on uh <laughs> on both social media accounts and the number in my phone. Yeah, yeah. And it's just gone. <sighs> Gone, bro. And as long as you're, as long as you hold, hold, hold strong, and stay <laughs> true to yourself. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like, unless they like show up at your house or like right, which pull is up when definitely you, possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those things. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> please don't do that. Yeah, um, don't do that. People go to jail. Yeah, please don't do that to me if you do see this somehow. <laughs> yeah, same. I should fuck. Probably didn't, didn't even fucking say anything. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the. We yeah, edit that out. It's <laughs> but but oh, that's another thing I want to talk about, dude. For whatever reason, Instagram Reels don't translate to YouTube views. Yeah, no. Nah. And Instagram Reels don't translate to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Yeah, Instagram Reels are one whole thing, and people listening in other places is a completely different thing. It was that it trips me out. What's kind of fucked up about it is cuz me, you know, as an artist, I'm monetizing everything. You know, I'm trying to get paid off of everything that I do. Exactly. Um and so for a while, you know, Instagram was paying me for reels and I was like, "Cool. Like, you know, that's that's bringing in something." Yeah. I'm not I'm not going to say that it was lucrative by yeah. any means, but you know, it was it was something. And then uh I guess Meta's been going through it. So like they started reeling back on on payment for that kind of stuff. This and so, is, yeah, this is something about there will be no more payments for influencers or right. whatever. And I was like, and well, I mean that's cool. But Where's that money going now though? But I wish, <laughs> yeah. But I wish that you know, if I post my song, you know, on a reel or a video on a reel, um, that you know, if if I'm generating views and I'm creating traction on your platform, like there should be some kind of compensation. And if it's not compensation by 
you know, maybe, uh, you know, money. Kick me back some advertising, bro. Like, put me, like, yeah. put my shit out there, like, because I know ever since I switched my account from a, from a regular person mm -hmm. to a business, all my numbers went down. And, shit. and so. That don't make sense. No, nah, it don't make no sense. And even, even more so because, like, um, and I may be wrong, but, like, in, in my, in my, in my job, um, I sell semi trucks, and so this is another thing. If you want to be an artist, don't feel like you you're too good or like it's, it's bad for you to have a job because that's that's crazy. The, the re I have a good job and I've always had a job and I've always strived to 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 be better at whatever it is I'm doing, right. whether that's my nine to five, whether that's fucking you know playing kickball. I don't care. I want to be the best. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've noticed that you know when. When I'm selling semi trucks, and uh, we have a marketing budget, mm -hmm. so I can boost, you know, every truck for, you know, so much money, and uh, when I'm not boosting, um, you know, it, there's a, a significant impact. And I, I know that makes sense, but I know that at this point, like, my following has grown, so my views should have grown, but mm -hmm. they're 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 holding my 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 posts back because they want mm -hmm. money, you know. Yeah. And so it's crazy. It, I, I don't something something. I mean, it's their platform, right? It's their business. Yeah. They control it. But like, I miss the old days. I miss I miss fucking chronological order. I like yeah. to be able to get out down done with my day, and then I could catch up to you know the people that I follow is who I want to see. I don't want to yeah. see all this other crap. Yeah, because there's some days that uh, it'll be people that I follow, and it's something that they post posted like three days ago. Yeah, it's like what the fuck. And then other times it'll be someone I don't follow. And they want me to follow. Oh, this fits your algorithm. Right. So look at this. And granted, yeah, that shit's funny sometimes. So I do follow. Sure. But so you figured out the algorithm a little bit. But it's like because it's a paid account, they're not pushing it. Exactly. It's, they're holding you back, you know. Yeah. I saw a post the other day that that uh, really made sense to me. And it may not be true. But like think about someone like Kim Kardashian. The audience that she has. Like, she has so much power if she can reach all those people. So, like, I feel like, you know, the platforms knowing, you know, that someone like Kim Kardashian can reach millions and millions of people, uh, they don't, they, they control that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, like, uh, at that point, what does she need, a, what does she need them for, you know? Right. Um, if she can sell one dollar product to you know yeah 30 million people then i yeah. don't know it's crazy yeah the con dude that's like like uh like like kanye he's yeah. not even active on instagram right but he randomly will go off on these rants when he went when he lost right. his mind a little bit and it was like dude you i was looking at the views on the reels and stuff and suddenly there's like it's all that everybody's talking about and it's like dude he's not even trying no oh, yeah it's just how big he is how big he is and just using his name, and he could he could do something. He could go on there and tell everybody the new Yeezys will be at Payless. Yeah, and they're going to be seventeen fifty a piece, and they'll be better quality than the Adidas ones. And the first thing everyone's going to do is haul ass to Payless, which I don't even know if their Payless is even still around. But I don't know, but I used to wear Hush Puppies. My mom used to yeah. buy me Hush Puppies from Payless because I couldn't get the Doc Martens. Yeah, I used to have. Uh, <laughs> I used to have when air, they used to have Airwalk skateboard shoes at the mall, yeah. And then they ended up at Payless, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like they got <laughs> yeah. some real brands. And then I remember now they got Airwalk at Walmart. I was like, "Oh shit!" Airwalk really went down. <laughs> but like, it's it's crazy the concept of just the influence that people have, and bro, like honestly, what is Kim Kardashian famous for? We all know. <laughs> that's and that's it. Yeah, like. Like, I didn't even know that she used to be, uh, I heard it on, on the radio, somebody was talking about it on Instagram, an interview that said, uh, she used to be, like, Paris Hilton's stylist. Oh, wow. Or, like, her, I don't know, her, she said she was, like, she was in her closet, she was, like, oh, one time I was in Paris Hilton's closet, and, like, this tennis bracelet fell out that was worth, like, thirty or $40,000, and it's, like, Good problem hold on, to have. hold on, <laughs> Kim Kardashian used to, like, go in Paris Hilton's closet and, like, pick out her clothes and shit? Yeah. Like, and that now to be this famous, and dude, I couldn't. Do you know what I w would like to see? I would like to see all the exes of all the Kardashians at a cookout. 
<laughs> that'd be fucking probably that'd be good entertainment for sure if that's what you're getting at. I mean, for, for sure, sure. Like, they should they should someone should list that as a TV show. Oof, you know I was a. Uh, I'm I'm still a little bit salty because of the Kardashian curse. Uh, I'm a I'm a Rockets fan, and so when James Harden started messing with uh, whatever the other sister, I was like, man, like there goes our championship. And sure enough, man, we ended up having to play Golden State with one of the best teams of all time, like every year in the Western Conference Finals, and yeah. get bounced. Like that curse is real, bro. What was it? Who was it? Miles Austin, dated Kim Kardashian, fell off. And like his whole career took a turn and, for the worse. I mean, he did blow quick too, though. But yeah. you know, they say a quick come up a lot of times is a quick downfall too. So. Yeah, but yeah, that's Reggie cool. Bush. Uh, yeah, now he's doing Wendy's commercials. He's still getting money though. Yeah, and then like he's on college. He does like a college game day. Yeah. in the morning. I think that fool should get his Heisman back, man. Now that they have all this, uh, yeah, honestly, dude, it's it's the tr- it, they, it, sh- it should happen. Like they should give it to him. It's like so now these guys can do exactly what he did. Yeah, and they making they making so much money now, man. It's like uh, it's uh, it's crazy. But, but imagine being the dude that's not making money now. Yeah, like you're just like some random dude on the team. Like you made the team. Yeah, you, you can go to school. We got your scholarship, but you're not good enough, so you're not. You know, I've seen it, bro. So like, I ran I ran Division two co- uh, track in college. And I was really blessed, man. I was on a full ride. I had everything I needed, you know. Yeah. Um, and then there's some people on the team that work just as hard. Uh, you know, maybe not as talented, maybe. But they were definitely more dedicated than I was, you know. Um, and it sucks. It's, yeah. It sucks, but life isn't fair, you know. 100%. Life ain't fair, and if you ain't... If you ain't got the juice like that, then you ain't got the juice, man. You just got to keep working harder, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, I think hard work hard work can, on some levels, get you get you far. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. But sometimes, like, sometimes you get LeBron James. Oh, man. Like, in high school, he was a grown man. Yeah. And or even then, bro, like, uh, uh, just just who you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, life is about who you know. And, it, and if you're in the real world, uh, you can be the best worker and... All that good stuff, but if you don't know somebody, then you're only gonna get so far. Right. You know, that's definitely look at. There's people that get drafted and 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 play on teams solely because of who they know. You know, yeah. uh, don't. I'm not saying that they're not talented people, what but did, they what wouldn't. What happened with, with the Mavericks? Yeah, the uh, Mavericks were trying to Jaylen design Brunson. Yeah, Brunson. Brunson, his, his whole his family, dad and everybody was linked in with the Knicks. Yeah, bro. And it's like Mark Cuban's like, I didn't even have a chance. Yeah, I mean, they gave him like a hundred million dollar contract or something, and he was just a breakout player. Yeah, you know that nobody had heard about. At least I haven't. No disrespect to him. Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I keep up with basketball. I ain't gonna lie. Right about now, when the playoffs really start yeah. getting rolling, and like I'll catch a Mavs game here and there. But now it's impossible to watch a normal fucking basketball game because most of the time if you don't have valleys or you don't have oh, that's all, it's like, dude, I can't even watch the sport I want to watch because y'all po- you're throwing it on some random channel that cable providers don't have. Yeah, fuck valley sports, bro. Like, they black out all the fucking games, bro. Like, that's why I have to legally stream this shit sometimes, <laughs> you know? Like, man. I'm just trying to watch my team play. I'm a Rockets fan, like I said. Yeah. So Valley Sports controls it too, you know. Yeah. So I can't. I got a we got a web I got a website for that. My, yeah. My cousin gave me. He's like, oh, just watch it over here. Yeah, definitely. Who was in your recording? Hmm? <laughs> no, don't say that. No, it's recording. <laughs> Dude, it's happened before. <laughs> Dude, the worst thing that's ever happened during recording <laughs> is not my kids screaming in the background. The worst thing that's ever happened. Because I thought I lost, like, 45 minutes, a 45-minute podcast. Because this couch is all electric and it plugs in. Yeah. So I had my phone plugged in. I thought my phone was charging. Oh, no. <laughs> and, like, the light was on because I didn't, I didn't have that light on. So I had my light on, light on, and I was like, the light went off. I was like, hey, what's wrong? Like, what happened? Yeah. And then I went and looked, and it said low battery mode. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it was still plugged in, and then everything just turned off. Yeah. And I went back, and I turned my phone on, and I was like, I told my cousin, I was like, bro, I think we just lost the whole podcast. Right. I think we just lost all 43 minutes of us talking. He's like, what? Because like, we- <sighs> it didn't save, right, when it died? Well, it, it took a second. Yeah. It took, like, 
probably like three minutes and then it popped up Dope. and i was like oh god yeah that would have sucked yeah it was not a it was not my strong I, I was it was a really bad moment i was like fuck <laughs> All right, so let, let back back into the gender roles. We'll touch on that a little bit more. So, uh, like we were talking about, money wise, having a family, everything. Like right now, dude, to try to buy a house, you're looking at upwards of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, to and get something decent. Yeah, more. to get something decent, you're looking at three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and and that's I mean that's that's four bedrooms maybe, depending upon the neighborhood and everything. And like just to do the math on that for a monthly mortgage payment, you're looking close to like twenty three hundred, twenty four hundred a month. Yeah, man. Not not everyone can do it, man. It's, it's and then cost of living, dude. I have I still have a three year old. I'm paying a hundred and ninety in daycare a week. Oh, and everybody, I mean, some people have family. Yeah. That'd be like, oh yeah, I help you watch your kids. Yeah. And some other people don't have family, and they kind of just have to make something work. I know I go through a church daycare and it's it's cheaper than like yeah. the normal daycare. Oh, for prices. sure, bro. Because I was gonna say, man, I know some people that pay racks a month on that shit, bro. Yeah, dude. Like last year, I think I spent like twelve thousand dollars or something. Man, that's crazy. And it's like, and that's and so you you're doing that, and then you think about a mortgage, and you think about groceries, electric, water, feeding car kids, payments. Like you add all that up, and then you're. Like, dude, it's almost impossible for a man just to be the breadwinner yeah, and to have a stay at mo- stay at home mom now. Yes, in this economy and and just the way that the the everything's structured, it's like so. Like, I do get when when women do make the like it's we're equal. Yeah, we are equal. You've always been equal. Women have always been equal. You bring something completely different to the table. That's for sure. Yeah, and I always I always revert back to if a woman does what were male gender roles back in the day it's time for the man to cook step up and cook a oh, meal, yeah. do some sure. laundry like whatever it is like it's 50 50 that's crazy and i think about that what you were just saying about how you know it to that's one of the reasons i'm single bro because uh, i have I, I maybe have some of that machista in me you know where i'm i'm like yo like if i can't provide for a family i can't provide a house I can't provide a, a, a suitable living situation that at least I would consider, you know. Right. If, if all else goes, if all else fails, if I can't hold that household up on my own, then I don't want to. Uh, then I don't want to put myself or anybody else in that position. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that's a different, a whole different concept to it because we're not saying that we're not equal. Now we're saying I don't think I can hold up my end because that's that's a big thing. Like yeah, and, and even then, like. Like sure, there's you know if if you're if you're able to you know be in a relationship and and split those type of things, um, if all else fails, I'm still a man. I still have yeah. to provide for my family, you yeah. know. And and if I can't hold it up because you you're having a kid and you can't work, then why the fuck are we having kids? You exactly. Know? And so. I and I think that's I think a lot of people don't think about it like that. They think about it as okay. I know because I, I know some people that are like all right. I'm 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 about to hit thirty five. Like, yeah. okay, if I'm going to have kids, it's going to be here pretty quick. Right. And it's like, and then I'm going to have to get the house. And then I'm have to, it's like, y'all thinking about it wrong. Right. Like, you sh- like up until you're like 30, your plan should have been have finish, that shit. finish school, get a good job, whatever it is, whatever you, whatever you're passionate about, go do that. And it takes off. The problem is you got to have all that, all your shit lined up before you try to bring somebody else into your life. And tell them, hey, come on, jump on board. And it's like, bro, you ain't got shit together. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong with building together either, right? Yeah. But I feel like me and my situation and the way that I that I view uh, my life planning out, uh, pan, my life panning out is is being able to provide uh, if all else fails. You yeah. Know? Uh, that's that's huge for me. And, and I think that, you know, eventually... So they say you're never ready, you know. Oh, you're yeah. never actually ready, and that may be true. I mean, that I think that may be true for me, but I need those. I need all those things in line before yeah. I, I can really commit to to somebody. Because in the past, again, like you know, I I w- It wasn't until I was out of that relationship that everything started moving up for me because I started focusing on myself yeah. and making sure that you know I was handling business and not you know so much so worried about 
someone else. And a lot of that shit's mental. You have yeah. to be in that state in your life where you're you're ready to say, okay, let me get my shit together. Yeah. Let me let me be in a comfortable spot where I'm I'm happy where I'm at, because a lot of a, a lot man a lot of relationships don't start with both people in a good headspace. A yeah. lot of relationships start with one person if you're lucky in a good headspace, <laughs> and if you're really unlucky, y'all are both fucked up. Yeah. And then you're just trying to force it and they fake it till you make it. That shit only goes so far. And yeah. if you're if you're talking about kids and a mortgage and cars and life insurance, all that shit, if if y'all are faking it, it's gonna all fall apart. Yeah, it's 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 it's, de- it's it's doomed from the jump, you know. And I feel like occasionally that happens. Sometimes I feel like people make sacrifices, compromises, and they can they can they can make a happy life for their for them, their significant other, and their kids. But it don't always work out like that. Yeah. Uh, back to the the financial situation, I think it's just crazy how much things have changed over time. Like, like my dad was a breadwinner. My dad was making enough money for my mom to stay at home. Yeah. And I and I think about that now, and I'm like, man, like how did he do it? Like how did he do it? But the dollar just don't go as far as it used to anymore. Nope. You know, it's it's really really crazy. And plus, I lived in a in a small town, so cost of living wasn't all that yep. that crazy or nothing like that. You know. Houses weren't what they cost now, and and you know, let alone you know, health insurance and all those yeah. other things. Dude, I had the health insurance guy come to my job, and he was like, "Oh, your health insurance package. This is what's available." And I'm like, "Bro, that that that's not gonna work. I can't afford that." Yeah, that's a, I and, can't. And 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 then you know, I mean, it's it's a crock right now, bro. It's 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 for the people. It's it's not for it's not for everyone. It's for yep. only who can afford it, man. Yep. It's kind of fucked up. I'm also like, fuck doctors, because I don't... So, like, I talked about it before. Uh, like, you can see my elbow. It looked like I had a bruise. Oh, yeah. But it was a psoriasis patch. I had, oh, yeah. like, white skin flakes. And I went to this doctor, and I was seeing this doctor, like, four or five times. All right, go do blood work. Okay, come back. Here's some cream. That don't work. Okay, here's some more cream. It's a different kind this time. That don't work. Okay, now you need to talk to this lady because she'll put you through with her company and they'll give you injections you can put in your leg and that'll help you. You have to do them three times a year, four times a year. All right, cool. Couldn't get none of the paperwork through with that company. And, I, dude, I was at the point where I was just like, fuck it. So it was messing with my mental state because it was like, bro, I feel like I look. It looks yeah, ugly. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. It's like I, I want to get this taken care of. And... Then it got started growing on one of my tattoos on my chest, and I was like, fuck. Like, it was really getting under my skin, and it kept, and it kept, and it kept. Then, got drunk, go to jail, DWI, get out of jail. Like, it was like 21 days sober with no alcohol, and this shit started clearing up by itself. Yo, that's wild, And I'm like, bro, the doctor couldn't just tell me that? Like, drink too much, stop drinking. Yeah. And But would I have stopped drinking? Probably not. Sure. But at the same time, like... Seeing different things that have changed, like trying, not trying to see the good in the DWI, but seeing some of the positive that's happened. Oh yeah, bro. You said I save so much money now. Yeah, bro. I'm not a, drinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm an optimistic person, bro. I think I think in any situation, you can find some good in it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and no, I uh, yeah, I feel like the the me- the medical uh, field or you know as far as that goes, it's a revolving door. They're trying to keep you in there. Yeah, keep you coming back. Yeah. Like, there's people that talk about, oh, you can fast or, oh, change your diet and all that. The, all these people on YouTube, just try this. Try this. And honestly, the doctors are practicing medicine. Yeah. Like, they're not held accountable if, if it don't work. You just have to go back. I'm a mechanic. Yeah. So, if I, <laughs> if I fix your car and then you bring it back, it's doing the same shit. Well, oh, uh, man, you know, well, we fixed this and then now this is fucked up. Well, it's making the exact same noise, doing the exact same thing as before. Right. They expect you to fix it for free. Yeah. Because you sold me seven hundred dollars worth of work, mm-hmm. and really, it's this completely different issue. Right. But when a doctor says, "Oh, sorry, man, we, I fucked up. Uh, you're gonna actually need this medication." Well, I've already paid for three different visits, seen a specialist, got a referral from here, went over here, and then they told me to come back to you. And then they just sit there. Oh, sorry, man. And I don't know. I have a lot of uh, built-up stuff with the fucking medical field and doctors, and. It, we go to the emergency room, five hundred dollars off top. That's crazy. And it's like, all right, but y'all didn't do anything. Y'all said y'all couldn't help us. I saw, I saw a meme. 
where uh, you know somebody was getting picked up by ambulance and and right before they put him into the ambulance he got up got up and, and took off running because he was like fuck no i ain't trying to pay for that i'll take my i'll walk my ass to the hospital <laughs> they, they check me out i'm good yeah but i mean it's it's the truth man because now on health insurance plans they they show you oh if you had to call an ambulance we cover up to six hundred dollars yeah. and it's like y'all have to put that in the plan now like so what happens when someone can't pay for that oh yeah. put it on your credit report but and then fuck your whole life up Oh, man, them, I ain't gonna lie. Those those doctor bills, I just don't pay them. Hey, bro, I, <laughs> I don't blame you, man. Like, uh, I think uh, another thing, like medication, we're the only place in the world that there's no regulations on 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 the price of of yeah. of, of medicine. And that's that's literally like preposterous. Yeah. Like, how the fuck are you gonna be? Uh, we're the only place in the world where you know big pharma. Uh, gets to run free run rampant yeah. you know they they get to set the prices and they're just un- unfathomable numbers that aren't even real you know yeah. like they're not real it's just a cash cow like the injections for uh the anti-seizure medicine like you have a seizure and they got to hit you with that injection yeah nine hundred dollars for the injection my god and it's like but people with certain health insurance or government funded health insurance they get it for free yeah but if I'm a normal working man that can't pay all my bills all the time, and I got three kids. So luckily, g- thank you God that they don't uh, have seizures. Right. But if they were to, then okay, then I have to I have to make sure I have this certain insurance plan, and I have to make sure that I sign up for this this discount program so I can go to this pharmacy. And it's like, bro, why are y'all building loopholes into something that could be so simple? Yes, yeah, it's, it's fucked, man. But you know, at the end of the day. Uh I think when it comes down to it, it's, it's just they're trying to get the most bang for their buck, you know? Yeah. And, and I think in, in something like health, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, it shouldn't. Yeah. Like, if you want to charge me $1,000 a month to go to a certain gym, I understand. Like, <laughs> you can, there are going to be certain kind of people at that yeah. gym, ones that really want to be there. All right. But for healthcare, dude, it's like, like, because I was born at JPS, the county hospital here in Fort Worth. I had a buddy, he said... He told me, he's like, bro, I did everything right. I met a girl. I met her at church. We fell in love. We got married, and we had our kid. He goes, we made too much money. We couldn't afford the insurance, so we didn't get insurance. We had our kid at JPS, $12,000 for the medical bills. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, $12,000. Like, why don't you get on, like, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, whatever it is. And he was like, we didn't qualify. Yeah. I was like. So you just you just have a, a medical bill for twelve thousand dollars. He goes, well, they added interest and they sold it off to another company, yeah. and now it's he, I was he was like, we're never gonna pay it off. Yeah, it's I was uh, like, well, don't pay no more on it, just because. And then, it, but it's it's, it's un, so, unfathomable to think that oh, you're gonna have a kid, twelve grand. Yeah, and now it's more. Middle class gets fucked, bro. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you 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 work the hardest. You 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 maintain the jobs that society needs, and at the end of the day, you get you get kicked in the ass over it, you know. Yeah, so. and it don't it don't make sense. There's there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, it's just it is what it is, and that's where we're stuck at as a society. Like my son talks about, I want to move to Canada. Yeah, he goes the medical the me- the medical system up there is basically like free healthcare. I'm like, yeah, but they pay more in taxes. He's like. But if the cost of living is lower, it's like, okay, I'm not going to argue with you because I don't know what the cost of living is up there. Right. Because, like, even here in Texas, uh, there's family out in, uh, uh, well, my ex, her her family comes out from La Mesa, yeah. Midland, Odessa area. And I talked to my brother-in-law, and he was like, yeah, uh, our house is like $700 a month for our mortgage. Yeah. Four-bedroom house. And it's like, dang, dude, that you can't get an apartment in Fort Worth for under eight right now. Yeah. And let alone in a decent, er- yeah. decent area. And out there, uh, all, well, there's nothing out there. So yeah. they have to go an hour to, uh, man, what is that, Lubbock? Yeah. Or they, they have to drive a distance mm-hmm. unless you work in the oil field or something. But I don't know, man. That's just another thing that adds uh, stress to my life, worrying about money. Yeah, bro. Uh, you know, money's a, a double-edged sword, you know. Uh I definitely uh, can relate to the growing up in a small place, uh, 
you know, I, I moved away, and I pretty much had always been away. I'm, I'm, I'm the one in my family that was always gone, and uh, shit gets real, you know. Like yeah. when you don't have help, and you, you move to a, a, a city, you know, uh, that shit can eat you alive, man. Like, yeah. uh, I, I think it's crazy thinking about all the sacrifices I made to be able to go out and, and, and be on my own, and you know, not, not having, you know anywhere to go didn't know nobody didn't yeah. know anything you know i just came out here on a whim on a chance and and thankfully it worked out for me but uh there's plenty of people that it doesn't work out for yeah all right man i don't know how long we've gone but we kind of anything else you want to touch on yeah yeah so uh um i got a couple shows coming up uh on june 23rd uh, we haven't announced it yet but you heard it here first all right uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a show with Devin the Dude at uh, Haltom City Theater on June 23rd. Uh, Devin the Dude, to me, bro, is like, he's a GOAT, bro. He's one of the greatest. Yeah. He's a pioneer. He's the, he's the Southern Snoop Dogg, you know? Uh, so I'm super excited. I've done a show with him before, but what's cool about this show is that you know, usually at big shows like that, there's like a million openers, and mm-hmm. you're fucking standing around. It's not always the best music while you're waiting to, to hear who you want to hear, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, it's just me and him. Just oh, me and Devin, yeah. So I'm going to be co-headlining that. And then on May 20th and 21st, I'm co-headlining um, uh, Phoenix Flexin in, in Dallas. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's from Shoreline. He's one of the Shoreline Mafia guys. Uh, I'm really really excited about that show because i feel like my music would do so well in california but i never had no no connects out there yeah so this is a, in hopes that maybe you know yeah. uh maybe not necessary with uh phoenix himself you know but uh, just knowing the right people out in california man because yeah. i'm trying to get my music out there yeah. i know i know the rasa out there would would yeah. definitely rock with my music so uh that's that's uh got that coming up on the 20 may 20th and then I'm going to uh, catch another leg of his tour uh, in San Antonio. Okay. So, super excited about San Antonio. Uh, I got to open up for Currency a few yeah. years back on his, uh, on his, uh, on one of his tours. And uh, it was at the Alamo, uh, Alamo Dome. I, don't know, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, like a big, it's like yeah. a huge place, big, you know. Yeah. It's like a really nice place. Like, uh, it's like a. Top tier yeah. place, and uh, all I had to say was like, "Where my Mexicans at?" And I feel like that fucking whole show was mine, bro. Yeah. Like they lo- they show mad love in San Antonio, yeah. so I'm super excited about that. So Devin the Dude, June 23rd at the Halton City City Theater, um, and then May 20th and 21st, uh, 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 Phoenix Flexing, um, and Dallas and in San Antonio. And then I just dropped the track. It's called Two Seater. You can find it on all streaming platforms. Uh, Octavio Two Seater. Um, that's it, man. All right, man. Well, we're gonna wrap this up. Y'all stay fed, and I'm still gonna say it. Talk shit in the comments. Yes, sir.